Good morning. The first item of business today is general questions. Question number one from Alex Rowley. Sir, to ask the Scottish Government what information it has on when the reports on the operation of the Fife Ethylene plant at Mosmoren by SEPA and the Health and Safety Executive will be published. Cabinet Secretary Rosanna Cunningham. Um, on 25th April, SEPA announced a formal investigation at the site. The timetable for that investigation will be decided by SEPA, which provides updates through its dedicated Mosmoren and Brayfoot Bay hub. HSE carries out regular inspections at the site under various regulations. At present, HSE are not expecting to publish any reports in relation to the Musmoran complex. Alan Charlie. President Officer, when the, the Musmoran complex uh, erupted last year, uh, causing widespread fear and plumes of black smoke everywhere, SEPA issued them with a final written warning. It then happened again this year. Does the Cabinet Secretary accept that people are in the surrounding communities very fearful of the safety aspects at that plant? And should the Health and Safety Executive not be called on to give assurances given the age of the plant and the amount of times that the plant breaks down and has to flare for safety reasons? Well, I absolutely understand the concern of uh, members of the community uh, in respect of what is happening and the impact that it is having on, on those local residents. Um, the plant is regulated by SEPA, which has a range of regulatory and enforcement powers available to it, and it exercises these independently of government. Um, I am aware that HSE uh, obviously also has a, a, a kind of... Uh, um, uh, joint role uh, in respect of this, but the member must be aware that HSE are effectively a reserved uh, organisation, um, and uh, I'm not sure whether or not uh, I have the ability to direct them in any way. Um, they, from what I understand, they have completed their own investigation and confirmed that actions had been completed to their satisfaction, um, but I also understand that they do not routinely publish reports. There are three other members who wish to ask questions on this issue. Annabel Ewing to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Annabelle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I know what the Cabinet Secretary has said, and it would be helpful to obtain some clarity from SEPA as to what impact the latest unplanned flaring incident will have on what had been their intention to proceed with a review of best available techniques recently submitted by the operators. Uh, and the upshot of the report on that. So it would be interesting to seek clarification on that. But also, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that I've written to her uh, supporting calls of my constituents for the Scottish Government to commission an independent investigation. Uh, and I am seeking a meeting with the Cabinet Secretary, and I hope that she will look favourably uh, on my request for a meeting. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, on the point of the meeting, I believe my office is already being in touch with uh, Annabelle Ewing's office in respect uh, of that meeting. Um, it, it is the case, uh, as I indicated to Alec Rowley, that uh, um, we do understand the uh, huge impact that unplanned uh, flaring is having on, uh, on, local, uh, on local residents. I am uh, aware of uh, the work that uh, SEPA um, has been doing uh, in terms of best available techniques. Uh, that is obviously a key step in identifying the way forward and improving performance on the site. SEPA are currently reviewing these technical assessments with a view to providing a summary update imminently. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Mark Ruskell. Following last year's investigation, permit variations were served on the operators, requiring them to introduce best available technologies to tackle noise and vibration. However, in a letter that I received from the SEPA chief executive just last week, he told me, and I quote, that previous reviews had concluded that best available technologies were being used at the installation already. So what was the purpose of these permit variations if those technologies were apparently already in place? Well, I don't know that I have very much to add to uh, the answer I've given Annabel Ewing in respect of uh, what SEPA is doing uh, with that. They're reviewing the technical assessments with a view to providing a summary update imminently, and I'm anticipating that those members who have a, a, a particular interest in this will be uh, awaiting uh, the publication uh, uh, of that uh, uh, summary update uh, with, uh, with interest. And Alexander Stewart. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Some members are calling for the plant's closure, and I certainly am not one of them, because I do believe that it's a major employer to the area is vital. But what we do need is a robust maintenance plan implemented that we can give reassurance to the community, and I would ask the Scottish Government what they're doing to facilitate that. Cabinet Secretary. Well, as I could remind the member, SEPA is the independent regulatory authority in this respect, and I don't want to do or say anything at the moment that would actually cause a problem for the investigation which they announced on the 25th of April. And I appreciate that that can be a little difficult uh, for people uh, who are under pressure locally in terms of the community, but, but equally for those members who are looking for uh, um, very early answers. But if I was to start to cause a difficulty in terms of that investigation, there would be much, uh, many greater problems down the line uh, than we currently experience. Thank you. Question two has been withdrawn. Question number three, Bill Bowman. Um, to ask the Scottish Government what progress has been made in addressing the areas of, for improvement identified in the Healthcare Improvement Scotland report, review of adult mental health services in Tayside. Cabinet Secretary Jean Freeman. Scottish Government officials are in contact with the board to discuss progress and the Minister for Mental Health met with the NHS Tayside Senior Management Team on the 12th of March to seek further assurance. Healthcare Improvement Scotland have also followed up on their report uh, and provided further feedback to the board on improvement priorities. Given the gravity of concerns raised about provision in Tayside, the independent inquiry into mental health services was established in May last year as an overarching review into men mental health services in Tayside. Bill Bowman. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. In recognition of Mental Health Awareness Week, I met volunteers in Dundee regarding adult mental health facilities. They wanted me to ask you if you knew that there is still no out-of-hours mental health crisis service in Dundee. So, uh, Cabinet Secretary, did you know this? And is it time you delivered on the SNP commitment of 24-hour mental health crisis care in Dundee? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I'm grateful to Mr Bowman for that uh, follow-up question. That issue has not been raised with either uh, I or the Minister for Mental Health. If he would care to provide details uh, of that, then we will certainly look at it. I know that the uh, provision of a seven-day uh, service for uh, the people of Angus uh, is being pursued and with new provision uh, coming on stream. And we're very happy uh, to consider any particular issues that may be getting faced in Dundee and resolve those as we are doing elsewhere. Question number four, Jackie Bailey. To ask the Scottish Government what funding is provided for social work services and how it ensures that these services are adequately staffed and have the appropriate facilities and resources to help children and families. Minister Marie Todd. The Scottish Government are delivering a funding package of 11.2 billion for local authorities this year. Compared to 2018-19, this is a real terms increase of 310 million or 2.9% for essential public services, including social work. However, it is the responsibility of individual local authorities to manage their own budgets and to ensure adequate staffing facilities and resourcing for social work services for children and families. Jackie Bailey. The Minister may be aware that social workers, social work assistants and support staff in children and family services at Western Bartonshire Council are balloting for strike action in June. Their concerns centre on the lack of staffing and the Council has failed to secure sufficient agency staff to cover. The facilities are inappropriate for conducting difficult and often sensitive interviews with families. I understand that there is now a backlog of more than 200 cases. Can I ask the Minister what direct assistance the Scottish Government can provide for the Council to resolve this problem? And will she meet with Unison to discuss staffing issues more generally? Minister. Uh, I'm aware that there are industrial um, action balancing. Any industrial action that, uh, that would affect services would obviously be really regrettable, and I hope that it can be avoided. I would encourage all parties to work together to seek a resolution to this dispute. My officials are in close contact with Western Bartonshire Council and the, the Health and Social Care Partnership and the Care Inspectorate are all monitoring the situation. And I do understand that the Council is making progress with the issues of concern to Unison and their members and that they have invited Unison to contribute to this work. 
We're liaising with the Care Inspectorate to support Western Bartonshire Council and the Health and Social Care Partnerships in their work to ensure the delivery of services and, to, and the continued protection of those at risk. And of course, this government is committed to supporting strong trade unions in Scotland for the benefits of workers in our economy. So I'm more than happy to meet with Unison in future. Question number five, Elaine Smith. <coughs> Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what value it places in local decision making in planning matters. Uh, Minister Kevin Stewart. Thank you, President yeah. Officer. Uh, ministers recognise the importance of local decision making uh, and use our call and powers very sparingly. Elaine Smith. Thank you. Well, I thank the Minister for his response, but um, a recent application by Ineos um, regarding that. Recent evidence obtained through an FOI shows that the Minister not only disregarded the initial decision of the local authority and the advice of independent reporters, but also the recommendation of civil servants, which was to refuse Ineos planning permission to close Bowness Road in Grangemouth. So why did the Minister decide to grant permission and put the interests of the large corporation before the interests of the local community? And will he reconsider this controversial and unpopular decision which undermines local democracy? Minister. Um, first of all, could I point out to the Chamber that the application was appealed on the grounds of non-determination, uh, which is when the local authority fails uh, to determine the application within the statutory period. Uh, ministers carefully considered all of the evidence relating to the planning application. Uh, there were very strong economic and security grounds for granting this appeal, uh, and ministers have set out their reasons in full in the decision letter, which is available publicly. Angus MacDonald. Uh, thanks, President Officer. Um, with regard to the bonus road in Grangemouth, um, I acknowledge the reasons given by the, the minister uh, with regard to this decision were based on the economic benefits and uh, the issues of security which have arisen in recent years. Uh, and I also acknowledge his uh, comment with regard to non-determination. Uh, it was due to the previous Labour administration at Falkirk Council failing to make any decision on the application locally within the timescale set out for major planning applications. Does he agree with me that the principle of local accountability works both ways? And does he also agree that if a stopping up order is granted by Falkirk Council, it must include mitigation measures currently estimated at £22 million, which Ineos must pay given the petrochemical plant has returned to significant profitability and that any mitigation costs must not be borne by the local or national taxpayer? Minister. Um, thank you, President Officer. Um, as I say, uh, we... Uh, uh, much prefer it if uh, local decision making takes place and the reason why this was appealed was because of a, a non-determination uh, by uh, the local authority um, who uh, should have uh, determined that application. Um, in terms of the stopping up order, uh, that's currently a matter for Falkirk Council uh, for determination. Uh, as this is a, a live application that may come before ministers, it would not be appropriate for me to comment on the specifics of the case, uh, as this may be prejudicial to the decision-making process. And Liam MacArthur. Thank you very much. The Minister may be aware uh, that earlier this month the reporter overturned a decision by uh, locally elected members of Orkney Islands Council to refuse uh, applications by Hooland Energy for two local wind farm developments. Constituents have been in touch with me to question why such a sensitive uh, decision with significant local public interest was left to be taken by an official rather than by uh, ministers. So can Mr Stewart please explain why this decision was not called in by ministers? Yes, sir. Uh, I believe that I've written to Mr MacArthur on this issue uh, in uh, some depth. Um, I uh, always am wary uh, of that special place in the ministerial code uh, for the planning minister when it comes to uh, talking about particular applications. So uh, if Mr MacArthur has any other queries on that one uh, from the letter that I've sent him, uh, I'd be happy uh, to respond to him uh, further on that issue. Question number six, Graham Simpson. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what analysis the Housing Minister has undertaken of whether complaints against property factors and letting agents are being effectively resolved through the first tier Tribunal for Scotland Housing and Property Chamber. 
Minister Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the First Tier Tribunal for Scotland is a, an independent judicial body, uh, and so we're unable to comment on or intervene in its decisions. In accordance with the Tribunal Scotland Act 2014, the Lord President is responsible for making and maintaining appropriate arrangements for securing the efficient disposal of business in the Scottish Tribunals. The President of the Scottish Tribunals will prepare an annual report about the operation and business of the Scottish Tribunals and how they have exercised their functions at the end of each financial year. That report will be provided to the Lord President, who must publish the report. Graeme Simpson. Can I thank the Minister for that answer and for his letter of Tuesday spelling out the legal position around uh, letting agent enforcement orders. I have been contacted by numerous constituents with problems caused by either a letting agent or a property factor. I have done some analysis of enforcement orders issued by the Tribunal uh, and found that despite receiving orders, some companies governed by a code of conduct continuously ignore the orders and are getting away with it scot-free. The first tier Tribunal for Scotland lacks transparency when disclosing details of those who continue to break the law and ignore these orders. They told me they've issued 26 enforcement orders um, and half have not been complied with. Ten of those were reported to police, but the tribunal point blank refused to say which ones and have not yet been able to establish whether the police are doing anything about it. This is unacceptable. Would the minister agree with me that in order for the system to work properly, it needs to be seen to do so and have a greater degree of transparency and indeed action is required to deal with the few unscrupulous operators. Minister. Um, thank you, President Officer. And uh, I start by <laughs> apologising to Mr Simpson if I don't cover all aspects of this because I had some difficulty in hearing all that he uh, said during his question. Um, failure to comply uh, with the letting agent enforcement order or a property factor uh, enforcement order are offences and are a matter for Police Scotland to investigate. Uh, and where ministers are notified by the tribunal of a failure to comply with an enforcement order by a registered agent or factor, Scottish ministers will, uh, where appropriate, contact the business to highlight their legal, legal requirements and the consequences of non-compliance, including the risk that they might be removed from the register, uh, making it unlawful uh, for them to continue. Um, I am very grateful to Mr Simpson and other members for pointing out difficulties um, that their constituents have faced, um, and I will always do all that I can to ensure that there is openness and transparency, and that everyone who is involved in this process um, is doing all that they can, including Police Scotland. And if Mr Simpson has any other information that he wishes to share with me, I'm more than happy to talk to him once again. Thank you. Question 7 has been withdrawn. Question 8, Pauline McNeill. To ask the Scottish Government whether it is satisfied that everything possible is being done to aid the recovery of Sucky Hall Street following the Glasgow School of Art fire. Cabinet Secretary Derek Mackay. The primary responsibility for the ongoing recovery of Sockey Hall Street is with Glasgow City Council. That said, we have been supportive of restoring Sockey Hall Street to its position as a significant business, retail and cultural location. Following the exceptional circumstances of the fires, the Scottish Government has assisted Glasgow City Council to support businesses through what has been difficult trading conditions. In July 2018, I announced a recovery fund of £5 million for businesses affected by the fires, and this fund has provided over £3 million of grant support support to more than 200 eligible businesses. Following engagement with the business community, I allocated the remaining £1.85 million to the Council in December to further support business recovery. In addition, we continue to fund discretionary rates hardship relief for affected non-domestic properties. Polly McNeill. Uh, Presiding officer, I would like to put on record my thanks to the Cabinet Secretary for extending that business rates assistance uh, to Sucky Hall Street businesses. But I hope it is still acknowledged that residents and businesses are still struggling. The O2 ABC Academy is widely seen as Glasgow's most iconic and popular music venue. I met recently with the owners who are keen to have the O2 rebuilt. As the Cabinet Secretary, does he agree that it is vital to Glasgow's status as UNESCO City of Music 
but also to Sucky Hall Street's long-term survival that the O2 ABC Academy is rebuilt. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, of course, I'll continue to work with the council, businesses and local MSPs who have been very constructive and consensual in taking forward the recovery of Socky Hall Street. I wouldn't want to overstep my role as Finance and Economy Secretary, though, or try and act as a determinant on future planning use. But I think there's a very strong case for that performance venue to continue to be able to flourish, to support uh, Socky Hall Street, the wider economy and, of course, uh, Scottish uh, performance. So I'm uh, sympathetic to Paul McNeill's case. And very briefly, Sandra Hoyt. Uh, thank, thank you very much, President Officer, and can I thank Paul McNeill for raising this particular issue and the work that's been ongoing by the Cabinet Secretary. In regards to the O2 and the area there, and the, the Glasgow School of Art, can the ca Cabinet Secretary agree with me that if there were extra money coming to the Glasgow School of Art, perhaps they could be persuaded to some of that money to help the local people and businesses of Sucky Hall Street? As I say, I'm more than happy to continue to engage with business support, with retail support, uh, with the vision for the Avenues project itself. And as I said uh, just uh, moments ago, the, there's been a good cross-party approach to this. I hope that that will continue so that Socky Hall Street and the economy of Glasgow can flourish. Thank you very much. And that concludes uh, general questions. Uh, but before we move to First Minister's questions, uh, could I invite members to join me in welcoming to our gallery the Honourable Colin Brooks MP, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Victoria.